Hi, everyone. Welcome to the live. Really excited to be here. We had literally hundreds of submissions for, from you guys for, for me to review your shops and to answer your Etsy questions. So I thought we would jump right into it. Um, thank you for submitting these. There's a lot of things we can work on with your shops, but something about me, I'm very direct to the point. Um, no fluff. I'm just going to go straight for what the biggest things to focus on are in each of your shops. And throughout this time, I'm also going to show you kind of where we cover these things in our program. Um, if you have questions that come up during this live or if you would like me to actually pull your shop up right here, right now, just leave a comment. Uh, leave a comment wherever you are watching this and we're happy to pull it up and go go into it. Or if you have just Q&A questions, answer, we'll answer those here too. So um, hope it is a good morning wherever you are at. This is the first shop that was submitted. Now this one is in Greece, which is interesting, um, 12,000 sales. Uh, a couple things with this. I love like the mission, right? Surgical, surgical scrub caps, but I think they are missing a gigantic opportunity with the product mix. Um, also with the, you know, site merchandising, the visuals, the photos, there's a lot of work to be done here. They only have 109 listings, which is really not that many. So uh, they could probably get these updated within a week, I would guess. Um, but I would say huge missed opportunity with the product mix. You know, we're doing a lot of one thing. And uh, what I would recommend doing is applying our seven types of products framework to this shop and these listings. Um, SEO is also a huge, huge thing that they could be working on. Uh, one thing about this is we want to think about who the customer is, what they're searching for. Are they only buying it for themselves? Would this be a gift, right? Um, those are just a couple things to think about. And um, how can they serve this customer? for four to seven years in as many ways as possible. So what we would dive into here, this is our course platform, by the way, if you haven't seen it, we just launched the brand new Ultimate Etsy course uh, about three, three and a half weeks ago. So uh, our students are loving it, the feedback is insane, but this is where we um, have everything that we teach. So the part that this shop would need the most is the seven types of products framework, um, plus updating all the listings all of them need to be updated. Um, I did go through them earlier, according to module three. Okay, this one is interesting. So California, I don't know if I believe this is in California. <laughs> so um, what I would say is at these types of price points, I mean, there's, there's a bit of a mismatch, I would say, with how they're presenting the product and the price points. Um, there's, to me, there's a huge lack of trust, huge, huge lack of trust happening. Uh, really, you need to have many different parts of your shop filled out in certain ways to establish that trust um, and to make it make customers feel safe about buying. Shop policies, if you are a jewelry shop and you don't have shop policies and FAQ, you are really gonna kill your conversion rate. So just something to note there. All right, this shop, I'm just gonna go rapid fire through your shops and kind of show you um, what the biggest takeaways are. And then I'm gonna mix in some of the questions that you submitted on Instagram. Um, let's do this one though. This one is interesting. Vacation inspired apparel and accessories. Now, so many things to fix here. Um, not, you know, I, I see you were going with the vacation inspired thing, but uh, I would say we're missing the mark. I think I audited this shop's listing here on a previous live. Um, but I would say we are way too niche. And instead, I would focus on who you want to sell to and how you can serve them in as many ways as possible. Now, a lot of people have come to me because um, we get hundreds and hundreds of questions a day in our email and on Instagram. And they ask, how do you target customers? Right? Because it's so much easier to find a niche. People think, okay, a niche, I'll just pick travel, I'll just pick vacations, um, I'll pick cruises, right? That is really, really limiting your potential. And the uh, like, the lifespan of your shop is going to be severely cut short if you do that to yourself. So um, what we do is we focus on in module two, 
targeting profitable customers. And we show you exactly how to choose profitable customers right here, how to do all the market research, how to know exactly what they want. And we have worksheets for you as well. So you can fill these out as you're going to make sure you don't miss anything. Um, but with our one-to-one -one coaching, if you came to us without a shop open, or maybe you have a shop and you're like, I don't know if I'm targeting profitable customers or how do I shift my shop to then target profitable customers, um, myself and our coaching team, there are 11 of us on the team. We can help you with that. Okay. So that is what I would say about that shop. Remember, if you would like your shop reviewed, just drop it in the chat wherever you're watching. Let's see here. Okay. Let's do one more and then I'm going to do some Q and A from Instagram. Okay, so this is an interesting one. Um, everything Barnwood, and they have no sales, but they only have, what, four listings. So for this, I would say definitely need to work on our photos. Um, I like, what I like is that this shop owner seems to be focused on items that have purpose and utility, but look at the price points. At these price points, $345 for a wall coat rack, someone could go to Hobby Lobby and find something that looks similar for $34, right? 90% different. So in order to charge 90% more um, or, or to have like a 90% difference, like an increase uh, on this type of product, you have to do things completely differently. And you don't want to be targeting the Hobby Lobby customer. Right now, this shop, there's no way someone is going to feel comfortable spending that on this type of product. So what, what the issue is, is right here, 39 inches to 51 inches. These are gigantic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like you guys, I haven't looked at your shops yet. Um, so, you know, I have not looked at this, but you, I have no idea that this is so big to me. I look at this and I think, oh, this is like a little 12 inch, uh, hook for my purses. This looks like it could be you know, four foot heavy duty thing. Okay. That would command this pricing, but the value proposition is what's missing. So what we really, really focus on is value proposition, which is that combination of your listing photo and your price point. Um, where we cover this is let me show you in module three, how to win in search results, value proposition. And then we show you examples that is what we would have to do with the shop. Um, now I have a student that sold wooden products and he made $500,000 on two listings last year. His name's Scott, he's in New York and he made 500,000 on two listings. Um, this shop owner could easily make those two types of listings that Scott had, but we're missing the mark on the marketing. Okay, looks like some of you are submitting your shops here. So I'm going to pull them open. Okay, here we go. Okay, need to definitely update our branding from the top. I have no idea who you're targeting. Um, looks like we have 124 listings. Okay, so we are all over the map here. This shop with only 44 sales should not be focusing on a ton of holiday. We need to also kill the holiday in here because it is sucking the life out of the conversion rate. Um, yeah, so it looks like a couple pages of holiday. So what we would want to do, um, we're, we're all over the map. Uh, I see a lot of mom, dad, grandma items, which is fine, but then we have like chicken whisperer, right? <laughs> so I would say uh, we need to know who we're targeting who they're shopping for, what they're coming to Etsy for, how can we serve them for four to seven years, and then build our product mix for them. Uh, I have students who do over $100,000 in print on demand, but they do not focus on t-shirts, okay? Uh, this is where we cover those, by the way. We have uh, up in module two, 
um, we cover here the best print on demand providers and how to have hundred thousand dollar plus months, as well as the most profitable products to sell with print on demand. Now, if you're wondering where do I even find like print on demand products, I'm just going with Printify because that's what all the YouTube tutorials are for. That's like everyone, right? So that's where everyone kind of comes to us with, but here we have a product match list. So print on demand product matching with the supplier. So let's say you want print on demand teddy bears. Okay, we have the supplier for you, the best supplier for that. Um, and we have a whole master list of POD suppliers as well. Okay, let's go on to another one. Looks like you guys are submitting them, but I, I wanna grab one that, this one's interesting. Okay, so Charlotte, North Carolina, jewelry and gifts boutique. Okay, if you know me, you might know what I'm gonna say based on the first page is that yes, we have over 3000 sales, but look at these price points. And what I will say is we are not good enough yet to be consistent. So we are doing the same type of photo over and over and over here. But what if we had a, like double the click through rate on a different type of listing photo? So what I would be doing is definitely mixing this up. This is a time to test, test, test. Uh, we are not good enough to be consistent. Unless you are hitting your income goals and you are consistently growing month over month, uh, I would not be so consistent. Um, we also need to make some updates to the backgrounds we're using. Um, yeah, SEO needs a complete overhaul. I notice this a lot with jewelry shops and I wanna actually show you um, our coaching team here because we have jewelry experts on our coaching team. So this is this is our coaching team alongside me. You get all of these subject matter experts. Saskia, she is um, amazing with jewelry. And so is Alicia, she is amazing with jewelry. Uh, they would be a huge help to you. But with jewelry, people usually end up missing the mark with their SEO. They're describing the product, not the purpose. And that is uh, one of the biggest things that I noticed about this. So you do need a full overhaul. Um, also within your listings, let's dive into some listings here. Um, you know what? There is actually something that would make it impossible for me to order without asking a question. Yeah, the uh, there are things in here. I wouldn't be able to order this without asking a question. So that's killing her conversion rate. Um, also, hurting the conversion rate, the way they've set this up. Um, this is not optimized for mobile or desktop, no site merchandising in place at all. Not optimized for Pinterest, huge missed opportunity. Uh, we focus a lot on driving organic traffic. So uh, we focus on in-depth strategies for Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Uh, it's not making videos like this, don't worry. Um, but those are all in module four, the sprint, all of those strategies to drive traffic. Um, so that's what I would focus on really for this shop specifically, Facebook, Pinterest, and I would say probably Instagram. It depends on how much of the process they're willing to show. It could do well on TikTok. Uh, let's do this one. This is interesting. So 9,620 sales, South Carolina. Now, um, I love helping supply category shops. I also sell over over 60,000 in supplies on Etsy every year um, as a small part of my shop, but huge opportunity, I would say, for the product mix. It looks like they do a lot of bows and wreath accessories, but the SEO is shattered. Like it is not helping them at all. So the fact that they have 9,000 sales is amazing to me. Um, they, it, it, you know, what it makes me wonder is how many more sales could we have if we were actually getting in front of the right people? Um, this shop, they should have 20 visits per listing per day. So, um, if you are this shop, 222 times 20 times 30, I want to see over a hundred thousand visits per month. I kind of think they probably aren't there based on the SEO. Um, so that's just a good marker. If you were wondering, is my traffic good? Am I doing okay? Um, 20 visits per listing per day. And I would love to hear a comment below. Are you close to that? Um, now, if you guys are wondering, okay, 
this is great. Like, how can I get Dylan to review my shop every day? And or how can I get her team to review my shop every day? Um, because I do work on, you know, alongside my team. Um, you can schedule a call with the link below. We, we will put the link into the chat box, wherever you are watching this. And it's just a link to have a call with me and my team. Now, you guys, this is not a, um, you know, you, you don't have to sign up, but we do take you through the program and show you everything, everyone. You can see all the students, their results that they're posting as well. So we'll take you through all of this. Um, we'll take you through our Zoom calls and our resources, um, the types of questions that you can ask us. We'll actually show you all of this on the call, but we also want to ask some questions because there are certain people we don't want to work with and that we aren't really aligned with. So if you were looking to make like a couple hundred dollars a month, you don't need us. Um, we wouldn't be the right fit for you. We want to, you know, work with people who are looking to make a minimum of five to 10,000 a month minimum. Um, but we also have students who make up to 8 million per year. So uh, if you are a high revenue seller and maybe you're just not seeing consistency, maybe you have employees and that's stressful that you don't have consistency. Um, we also work with many shops like yourself and that's in a special high revenue group. All right. So um, with this shop specifically, though, I love helping supply shops. I would want to help you with expanding your product mix significantly. Uh, I would say you probably, um, I, I'm guessing you're not seeing as many sales in the last couple of years as maybe 2020. Um, I think, you know, there are trends for this customer. And I, I think we could be doing some different things to keep up with trends in the supply arena and different types of customers that you could be serving. So I see an opportunity for even a B2B customer with the types of materials you have. Um, so I'd love, that. that's what I'd love to help her with. All right, this is interesting, handmade gifts for baby showers. Okay, we've got a lot of work to do here. Um, I mean, we just are not branded, not established. We need many more listings. Uh, looks like the idea is there, but then we are sprinkling in a lot of uh, digital products here, templates, wire art templates. So uh, are you B2B, are you B2C? I think that's something you wanna start thinking about and deciding on. Um, you're gonna have much higher margin going B2C. And you know, I think it just depends on how you wanna spend your time. Do you wanna be doing digital products, physical products? Um, I would say we're, we're kind of sitting on the fence right now and we're neither here nor there, which means it's gonna be hard to resonate with either type of customer. So we gotta make a decision. And um, if you need help doing that, we have a 10 step opportunity checklist that we can walk you through. Uh, and that will tell you which, which idea is better for you. All right, let's do the shop. Now, I think I saw a message from the shop. Um, that said they felt like things weren't that bad. Um, I th think it was the shop, maybe it was a different one. But what we wanna do is overhaul every single mock-up, every single one you see here. It needs to be changed. Um, yes, keep submitting your shops here. We'll, we'll keep pulling them open. Every single mock-up has to be changed. And I would say probably about 80% oh, of the product mix that I'm seeing so far is probably something we want to deactivate and go in a different direction. I would say maybe only 20% of this would sell on Etsy. Um, even with perfect SEO, a lot of this isn't going to sell. Most of this won't sell, even if you had the perfect optimized listings. So what we would want to do for you is help you with designs. Now, a lot of people struggle with, with designs. So we have a, a lesson here all about how to make winning designs that stand out in digital and print on demand. So that is what we want to help um, the shop with and then completely overhaul the mockups. Honestly, with eight sales, depending on how long the shop has been around, I might just scrap it and, and help them start over. Okay, let's do some Q&A from Instagram. Um, if you guys have just general questions and you don't want me to review your shop, but you have actual questions, let me know. I'm going to do some rapid fire. Is it okay to mix digital and print on demand in the same shop? Yes, absolutely. As long as you're serving the same or similar customers. Do you think AI will eventually replace every job? Absolutely not. 
Um, for physical items, should I make to order or have inventory ready to go? I would say it depends on your cash flow situation. Um, made to order, you'll have a higher cash flow. You'll be sitting on less inventory because your sell through will be faster. So something that we focus on in corporate e-commerce is sell through, sell through in turn. And um, that is what we also focus on with our students who have inventory. So I would think about your cash flow situation and um, what your needs are with that. Start made to order that's lower risk. Um, let's see, you already have an, do, oh, do I need to have an Etsy shop already to have a call with you? Absolutely not. I would say about 15% of our students who join our program um, do so because they know they want to do Etsy, they're committed, but they wanna do it right. They wanna do it right the first time. Um, so it's actually, I love when you don't have a shop. Uh, that's, that's one of my favorite things, uh, cause then we can make sure um, that you don't end up with a lot of work to then redo. Uh, you're not at all creative. What can you sell on Etsy? Uh, there's so much you could sell. So the supply category is easy. Uh, it's literally identifying margin opportunities and then buying and reselling. So that would be an easy one. Um, just an example. Uh, let's see. When fixing a list, uh, when to fix existing listings versus starting a new shop with no traffic. If uh, we actually have a lesson all about this in our brand new program, it's in module three and it's um, it helps you decide, where did that go? It helps you decide if you need a new shop opening, updating your shop or starting a new shop. Uh, I would wanna look at your stats in your current shop to see if it is worth starting a new shop or opening um, or continuing with the other one. What is the best way to do target audience research? Right up here, module two, um, market research. All of these lessons. Um, the first one, two, three, four lessons of module two. Um, let's see. At what point should you consider doing a Facebook shop or a Shopify website? So we cover that in module five, and that is all about expanding your business. So once you're hitting about 80 to 100,000 a year on Etsy, it does make sense to start to look at Shopify, another website. Um, I have a student, she went from 250 sales to over 21,000 sales in one year. And she does over, um, let's see, last time I checked, she was doing over $55,000 a month. And at this point she's expanding. So she expanded onto Shopify and now FAIR. And she's applying these principles here to FAIR and she is seeing incredible success already. So just something to think about. But do not do it too soon. Otherwise you're gonna dilute your efforts. Let's see. Let's see, uh, print on demand, should you order samples of everything before listing? No, absolutely not, um, definitely not. But once you start to get best sellers, uh, then I would recommend definitely ordering those best sellers to use in your content strategy and in your listings. All right, one more, and then we'll go back to shop audits here. Um, what percent of Etsy success is luck? You guys, it's, it's not luck, it's work ethic and it's strategy. Um, you don't have to be smart, but you have to have a game plan. Um, do you, you do not have to be the smartest person in the room. You don't have to be some e-commerce genius, but you have to have a plan. Otherwise, what you end up doing, and I, I see a lot of you doing this, to be honest, is pulling tips and tricks from like 50 YouTube videos. You're like pulling a tip and a trick from each one. And some of them are conflicting. Some of them are actually like working against each other. Uh, and you end up not getting anywhere. You're taking, you know, one step forward, two steps back because you don't have a cohesive strategy. So that that's like what this type of thing is designed for. Whether you get a cohesive strategy from me or someone else, just stick with a cohesive strategy. The tips and tricks from, you know, 20 people, it doesn't work. Um, Okay, when you are getting, someone asked, when you are getting 200 plus orders a day, are you still sending order recap messages? How do you go about that? Um, there are certain automations you can do. There are, um, there's VAs you can have. If you are interested in uh, a VA, let us know, because we actually have a great resource for that. Uh, all right. Do you believe gift mode will have a negative impact on some shops? No, I don't. I don't. Um, if your SEO is correct, then it, it won't hurt you. If you are 
scrambling with messed up SEO, uh, you were going to be hurting anyways, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so if your shop was going to do well without gift mode, it will do well with it. If it wasn't doing well before gift mode, it still won't do well. So, um, okay, let's do a couple more shop reviews here. Um, if you guys are liking the shop reviews, please let us know in the comments um, or share this wherever you're watching so that we know if this gets a lot of views, we'll do more of these. Like I would totally be happy to do one a week if you wanted, um, but I, but only if people like them um, because I do do these every day on our, uh, or not every day, sorry, every week on our um, Zoom coaching calls. So like, this is what they look like. We go through your shops in person, just like this. Um, every week you could have me do that. And you could actually have this done four times a week because we have four Zoom calls available to you. Uh, if you are curious how that looks, you can just look at the schedule. So I have one tomorrow evening. If any of you wanna join that, um, make sure you schedule a call with the link um, in the chat box, wherever you're watching. My team will put that link in there and you can talk to me and my team members today. Like we could, we could actually hop on a call today. <laughs> um, and it's just like roughly about 30 minutes, sometimes 45. Um, but we can actually talk through your shop together and see if this makes sense for you. Um, I am open. Typically I, I have about, let's see, roughly 12 hours of open availability per day that I um, am, you know, coaching everything throughout that time. But uh, yeah, we, we do have open slots for you to talk to me and our team members. So um, that is what these uh, coaching calls are about. But let's um, dive into this one. Okay, so <clears throat> shirt hits the fan. I love the creativity here. But these mock-ups have got to go. Um, yeah, so major issues with the mock-ups and the designs, to be honest. Um, I, I think this shop like is way too focused on t-shirts and they would do way better if these were not t-shirts. Uh, the thing is about t-shirts. Yes, there's a lot of tutorials out there. So a lot of people start with that. And, um, one thing to think about is if these are giftable items, which a lot of these look like, that's going to be an issue because a lot of people are hesitant to guess sizing when they're giving gifts. So um, I would use the seven types of products framework in module two, apply that to your shop, plug it in. And I think you would have way more success. Um, you have 499 sales, which I'm, you know, I'm surprised. Um, I think you would have way more than that if you had uh, work, you know, if you were working on your product mix a bit more. So um, we have some great products that uh, some of our students in print on demand do over 40, 50,000 a month that this shop would really benefit from th those specific products. Um, and then also um, my team just reminded me, we, if, if you're curious about our strategies, we have a 16 step checklist to grow your Etsy shop. Um, if you would like that, we will send you the link right now, like immediately, and just comment wherever you're watching checklist, and we will send that to you. Our 16-step checklist, and it's 16 ways to grow your shop. I don't like fluff. These are just action steps. So yeah, we want to work on the product mix and the SEO needs significant work here as well. All right, this one, all right, gift for travel enthusiasts. Again, like we saw with the other vacation travel shop way too narrow. But as we're seeing, I think they're having a hard time staying within that anyways, um, looks like. So I would say we've got a completely, like this is fine. Maybe 10% of your product mix is this. 90% should be something else. Um, yeah. And it needs all new mock-ups. Pretty much, I would say 80% of the mock-ups need to be changed. And we never want to have the white background. Okay. And I would say, you know, really change up the customer base. So this is maybe only 10% of your product mix. How can you serve this customer in the rest of their life? Okay. This one, another, okay. Luxury handmade Western jewelry and accessories, three sales. Um, definitely need to change the pricing strategy. All the photos have to change. If you're trying to go luxury, this, this would not be the way to do it. So 
um, I think we are not getting in front of the right customer. Um, and I think we're not clear on our branding. If we're going for luxury, um, I just don't think we're clear on the branding and clear on the customer, who they are, what they're coming to Etsy for. Uh, I think if you want to go that Western route, there's so much opportunity to play with trends right now that you're not hitting any of the trends in this market um, for this customer that you could be. So um, we actually have a trend video. Uh, it's part one is on YouTube. And then part two is um, in a link that we can send you. If you'd like to see part two of the trend video, if you never saw part two, just comment below trends and my team will give you the link for that. Uh, let's pull up another one here. Here, you guys are submitting them. I'll pull up the ones you're submitting in the chat. All right, another jewelry. Look at jewelry. All right. So you look very talented and like a crafty person, but I think we got to make different products. Um, I, I Like the fact that you could make these kind of like granny square shoulder bags, like could you turn this into a Lululemon style belt bag, for example? That would do really, really well. Um, that you could charge $50 for. It would probably take the same amount of work, but this charging 50 for that, it's gonna be difficult. So if you're gonna go with um, you know, handmade at these price points, you've gotta do it in a more trendy, modern, relevant way. And those are, so I would make updates to the product mix. Um, all of the photos have to be redone. Uh, let's see, all of the SEO has to be redone. Um, yeah, so it needs a lot of work, but you seem very talented and committed. So um, I would say there's a lot of potential here and you are you have skills that we could help you monetize in a stronger way. Let's do a couple more from the chat. Now, if you are wondering, if you are like watching this right now and you're trying to evaluate, like, how's my shop doing? Is, am I like missing the mark? What, like, where am I at? Am, is this normal for me to see this level of sales? Um, feel free to ask the question. Like my shop is this old. I have this many sales. Is this normal? Or I've made this much money by now. Is this normal? Um, because a lot of people come in, I find thinking, oh, like, yeah, I've gotten 10 sales in like two months. That's not that bad. But really a good goal is like 100 sales in a month. Um, if you need help coming up with the goals, we can definitely help you with that. But um, a good set of questions to ask yourself are these. Um, here's 50 questions that we use for people to kickstart their coaching with. It's actually where they can just copy and paste this to us in our private one-on-one -on -one coaching channel. So for example, like if you're sitting here right now watching this wondering, what do I even focus on in my shop right now? Um, copy and paste this, send it to us in our private one-on-one -on -one coaching channel. It's unlimited 24 seven coaching. So you could literally throw these questions at us all day, every day. Um, three parties for the shop this week. What are five new products to add to your shop? Um, Let's see. This is a funny one. I'm overwhelmed and I don't know where to start and I need money fast. What should I focus on? And myself and my team can today jump into your shop and answer those questions for you. Um, just if, if you are interested in getting access to this level of one-on-one -on -one coaching, we've done this for a couple thousand people. And we have a really, I would call it a well-oiled machine at this point, um, a really great process. And we can do a baseline shop audit for you right away within 24 hours. But just, um, you'll have to schedule a call. It's a free call with the link in the chat box wherever you're watching. Um, so let's get back to that shop here. So this looks like, okay, great, SVGs. I have students who do SVGs up to, let's see, about $24,000 a month selling SVGs, PNGs, um, clip art, things like that. So there's definitely a huge opportunity for this. But 224 listings, it's not that you need a ton more listings. It's really that you need a lot more variety. We are doing, that's the thing here. We're, we're not good enough to be consistent. Um, we're not good enough to be consistent. And this is fleeting. This product mix is fleeting, which means it's sure. Yes, it was trendy in the last 18 months, but this is not going to be lasting. This does not have a long time horizon. Um, the longevity is 
not there for this product mix. So really need to mix this up. What you have to do, because you're selling B2B here, that you gotta remember, you're selling B2B, so you have to be way ahead of the trends, way ahead of the curve. Etsy is one of the last places to get trends. So what this shop owner, they don't wanna look to Etsy to see what's working. They need to look outside of Etsy. Um, if you need help identifying trends, we have this part here of the program, how to find hot trends before they're on Etsy. Uh, that's what the shop would really benefit from. So uh, yeah, lots of rapid, rapid changes I would recommend making here to stay relevant. Um, let's do some more that you guys submitted here. Let's see here. Oh, someone said, I want to start a shop with diff di different products, but I don't want to give up on my current shop. Totally fine. Um, but I would focus on one at a time. Here's another one. Breezeway Design Store. We'll do that one next. What's this one? I haven't looked at any of these yet. Portugal. All right. I can tell this person has a good eye. I like the mock-ups they're using a lot from the banner so far. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. There's some things here. There's a lot going on. But a big theme that I want to point out is that they're going with some trends, which, which is good. But sometimes the way they're doing the trends is not in a trendy way. So if you're going to do a trend, if you're going to follow trends, trends that are outside of Etsy, just make sure you do it in a trendy way. An example of this is here. This, you know, trend of the groovy font is, is good. But I would say we're on the back end of that, by the way. So I wouldn't, if you're starting a shop or if you're thinking of what to add to your shop, I would not be going hard in this type of font. Um, the colors though are making it not trendy. The color combination, you know, they're, the monochromatic different shades of a similar color family are, that's trendy, but then we're throwing in the aqua and I think that is hurting it a little bit. Um, also the brown tones specifically are not as trendy. I would do this in a little bit of a different way. So um, we're also, it's not clear that it's personalized until you really click in. Like here, I had no idea. That this was personalized. It didn't even jump out at me um, until I clicked on it. So uh, I would say there's a lot of potential here. The shop is an example of some good mock-ups, some unique mock-ups, but we want to make sure that the trends we're doing are done in a trendy way. And I think there's a lot of updates you could make to something like this that could make the product itself have a stronger product market fit. Okay. Okay, this one, France. We have students from 35 countries, by the way, and our coaching team is global, so we truly are 24 seven. Um, I would say this one needs a lot of help with the mock-ups. Uh, I would say personalization is the good thing they have going, but the price points, pro pricing strategy needs to be completely reworked. And I would say, who are they targeting? Do they wanna target people in France or outside of France? because that would change the SEO completely. All right, here's a shop in Canada. Okay, starting from the top, we wanna um, overhaul everything at the top. Um, everything at the top, the whole banner needs to be redone. I would say 437 listings. I would say all of the mock-ups I'm seeing so far should be redone. Yeah. They pretty much should all be redone. The masks are maybe okay. Hats are maybe okay. But I really, I would say 95% of the mock-ups should be redone. And I think Facebook strategy would be insanely successful for this person. All right, here's another shop. Let's dive in. Mock-ups are small businesses. All right, we are all over the place, not clear on who we're selling to. It's not gonna resonate. Um, 246 sales, which is good. Let's see what's selling. So mostly I see a lot of the time blocking. Yeah, so it looks like the time blocking is really their best seller. Um, so I would really rethink kind of who are we selling to? So this is for small businesses, but manifestation deck, realtor kit. Um, I would I would pick a customer, identify how you can serve them in four to seven ways or four, for four to seven years in many different ways. Um, really build a strong assortment for them and then start expanding to different customers. Because right now it's like we have 
paint color swatches. We have manifestation deck. We have realtor kit. We have, you know, just, it's like we are throwing spaghetti at the wall a little bit. Mid journey tutorial, right? All right. Let's see any other questions for Q and A here. Um, let's see any other questions. I don't see any questions coming through in the comments. A lot of you guys seem like you like the shop reviews. Um, something a lot of people have asked what makes the program, by the way, different from Etsy. So in these shop reviews, you can you can probably tell I'm talking a lot about the what, not the how or the why. A um, little bit on the why, just to show you that like things actually really need to change if you want to see different results. But um, really, YouTube is going to be focused on the what. Uh, we don't make money from making YouTube videos. We actually spend a lot of money making them. And um, with having actually a step-by-step -step program, um, that is where you are going to find results because everything is prioritized for you. It's laid out in a very step-by-step -step way. Um, even with checklists and tutorials, um, you can see like these fillable worksheets. We have income goal calculator, profit calculator for you. Um, so we, we actually put all of this together for you packaged with a nice little bow, uh, essentially. And that is, you know, for, this is for people who have, I would say an hour a day, they are really committed to turning this into a business and they don't want it to take five years. So um, that's why, you know, I learned a lot about how people learn from our original course, which is right here. Um, let me show you an example. So a 97 lessons, 58 hours, you know, these lessons are a lot longer. Um, the new program has a different structure to it. So uh, the new program is, you know, three to five minute lessons, very step-by-step -step, bite size, and everything builds on the previous thing. So you just go in order, you knock it out, and it's designed to get you some quick wins. So by the time you update all your listings, according to module three, and you hit module four, this is where it's it's the strategies to get you your next three to 4,000 sales, whether you come in with 80,000 sales or whether you come in with nothing. The next three to 4,000, we wanna ramp up fast with these strategies. So um, it's, it's all laid out for you step-by-step, step. no ads required. A lot of people think you need ads. You definitely don't. It's one of the worst ways to spend your money. Etsy ads I'm speaking about. Um, you don't need social media ads for this either. And um, it's designed to get you some quick wins. So if you have questions about this, just, or you'd like to see it for yourself or talk through your actual shop and your struggles, just schedule a call with the link in the chat box. All right. I think we have like three minutes left. I'm going to knock out a few more shop reviews for you. Let's see here. We did this one, this one. Okay. This one, New York. All right. Four sales. Yeah, re we need to completely, I would say, redo the product mix, redo the designs, redo the mock-ups. Let's take a look at a listing. Yeah, see, like, there's there's a, a couple lessons we have about the 18 different types of listing photos to pull in. Um, and we really don't have any, no videos, not, yeah, not a high converting description, no site merchandising not optimized for mobile or desktop. Um, it's going to be pretty low converting. So before, the thing is, I see this happen a lot. She's like 123 listings here. She could go get up to 500 listings just like this. And it's going to be the same order velocity as right now. So people like, are, they're going to spend their time. You're going to spend your time on your shop no matter what, right? You're, you're going to put the time in. It's, you're going to either put the time in doing the right things or you're going to put the time in doing the wrong things in the wrong way that then you'll eventually have to redo or you'll give up because you're not going to see results. So it is beneficial to do things right um, the first time. Okay, so this shop is interesting. So jewelry, South Africa, I would say need to update all the photos, all the pricing strategy. Um, the SEO needs to be updated. Product mix in general, it looks like, you know, I, I envision this shop, they could go for a total Christian boutique feel. Um, but right now we're so focused on jewelry that we're not going to be able to do that until we expand the product mix. So 
Um, I would say opportunity also selling jewelry, no, no policies. You know, I don't trust, especially coming from, you know, being in the U S right. So buying something from South Africa with no shop policies, like makes me, makes me nervous, right? You, you want to make your customers feel really comfortable ordering internationally. Let's see here. Okay. I think we've done a lot of jewelry and print on demand. Um, it's a lot of the same things that we see over and over again. Um, this one's interesting. Pet. Yeah, we have we have some students um, targeting pet customers doing over 10,000 per month. Um, and for this, this is very focused on the pet itself. I would say there's a huge opportunity to target how the pet fits into the family. And also, what else can they offer around a pet, right? There's new pets, puppies, kittens, like the whole experience of getting the new pet. And then there's, you know, phase, the, the lifespan of the pet, but then what's gone, what happens when the pet's gone, right? That type of thing. Um, you could definitely get into that. I would say we're doing too much of, of the same thing right now. And I would probably not be going hard with holiday because of how, yeah, I wouldn't say we really have strong traction yet. And, you know, pets, a lot of people see pets as their kids. So um, a lot of discretionary spending does go to pets, but I think the product mix could be a lot different. We actually have uh, a student in Switzerland who does print on demand with pets and she has some great product types that this person could be implementing. Cause right now just the bandanas and t-shirts it's, you know, missing so much opportunity. Um, let's do a couple more from the comments here. Maybe one more. Okay, awesome. Okay, wall art. So, ooh, we have to be really, really careful here with copyright things. I'm not even going to touch this one because um, there are quite a few potential issues. Um, definitely check your policies here to make sure you're abiding by the rules. Um, let's do let's do this one since that was kind of a a buzzkill ending. Um, this one will be good. Okay, we have digital designs. Okay, digital printable coloring pages, clip art. Um, I would say that the way that the shop is doing their branding is actually really polarizing in the, in in a bad way. Like we are pushing away a customer that we might want to attract with this type of branding. Um, so the branded elements here is really everything visual that's not the product itself. Um, product itself it can become part of your branding, but I'm looking at these overlays, I'm looking at these fonts, I'm looking at the colors used, and I think we're missing the mark. I think, um, I actually think if it was just black and white, super simple, it would do better. So um, yeah, I would say we need to read, before you know creating another 143 listings, want to make updates to all of these first. And if, if the shop owner would like help with that, definitely reach out to us and we can help you. So um, you can be very profitable with clip art. We have students doing, I think I mentioned um, uh, upwards of 24,000 per month uh, in revenue. This is just revenue, um, but we would have to execute differently with different strategies, different SEO, um, yeah, different photos, different descriptions, pretty much overhauling things. But you're, you just remember, you guys, you're probably already putting time into your shop. You might as well spend that time doing the right things. Otherwise, you're just spinning your wheels. So um, if you would ever like us to look at your shops, just schedule a call with the link in the chat box, wherever you're watching. Um, if you'd like to see what has happened with um, shops that we've worked with, go to YouTube here. You can go to our channel, go to the community tab. And these are where we post all the results. You can see 11 hours ago. 
So um, you can see the people's names. We do cross out their last names so you guys don't stalk them. Um, but uh, a lot of them will share their stats, um, you know, their percentage increases. This student does print on demand, Candace. Um, she's pretty close to $20,000 months right now. Um, this person first month using the program, revenue and orders were up 2,000% to over $2,000 in revenue. Um, yeah, so you can definitely check out all their stats. And um, if you'd like to see, learn more about how this would impact your shop and actually how they got these amazing results, uh, we can show you on the call. Um, but we'll hope to see you in the next video. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel, by the way. If you're not subscribed, uh, we found 60% of our viewers were not subscribed. Um, but we have videos that come out Mondays and Thursdays, typically. And then if you like this live stream where we are auditing your shops, let us know. So we'll uh, keep doing more of these.